there, tech fans. Rick here again with a full review of the O-Ray CO-UHD330-K HDMI Extender Kit. This product makes it incredibly easy for you to share all of your HDMI media content with a second remote location up to 100 meters away over a single RG6 coaxial cable. The product fully supports 4K ultra high definition media content and is both HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2 compliant, which means it'll work with all of your modern media gear and a wide range of different media styles. The product also provides audio extraction capabilities at the remote end that will digitally strip the audio component from the media stream you're sharing and allow you to pass that along to a soundbar or home stereo for better quality audio. The transmitter provides local loopback functionality, which allows you to enjoy the content here while you're simultaneously sharing it with your remote location. The kit even includes a set of infrared blasters that will collect up the remote control signals from that second location and pass those back over the same coaxial cable to the primary location so you can remotely control the content you're watching. Now as part of this review, I'd like to start with an unboxing just to show you everything that's included with the kit. And then I'll take a closer look at the transmitter and receiver modules and explain the connections and indicators so you understand exactly how to use it. And I'll finally remind you of a few things that I really like about this kit that you can use to compare it to others you may be considering. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you open up the box, you'll find the transmitter module and the receiver module. You'll find a set of brackets you can use to mount these modules up off the ground and out of the way. You'll find two DC power supplies. These are 12 volt, one amp power supplies. This end will plug into any standard wall outlet. The other end of the cable has a barrel connection on it with a locking collar. You'll plug that into the back of the unit and tighten the collar to provide all the power you'll need for both modules. You'll also find a warranty card and a full instruction manual included, and this gives you specifications and connection diagrams and other really important information you'll need to understand about the product to use it correctly. Finally, there's a set of infrared blasters included as well, and these look similar but they're slightly different. There's a larger head and a smaller head. The larger head goes on the remote end where the receiver is connected. The smaller head goes at the primary location where the transmitter is located. This one will collect up the signals, send them back digitally over the coaxial cable to be rebroadcast here again so you can remotely control the content. Now if you stay tuned next, I'll take a closer look at both modules, and then I'll come back and remind you of a few things that I really like about this kit that you can use to compare it to others you may be considering. Inside the kit, you'll find a sender module and a receiver module. Both of these feature full metal enclosures, which make them incredibly durable and really the perfect choice for both residential and commercial installations. Let's start with the sender module. On the front, you'll find a series of four LEDs on the left. The first one is labeled power. The minute you add power to the unit, it starts an internal power on self-test, and when it passes that test, it'll light that LED, letting you know the module's ready to use. The next one over is the link light. When you make the coaxial connection between the transmitter and the receiver, that connection is checked. Once it's been verified, the link light will come on, letting you know you have a valid connection. When you connect the transmitter up to a media device with an HDMI cable, that connection is also checked. Once it's been verified, the input light will come on, and that lets you know you have a solid connection to your media device. If you decide to use the local loopback functionality of the transmitter to enjoy the content here that you're sending to the remote location, when you connect the second HDMI cable to the rear of the unit to the HDMI out in a local monitor, that connection is checked. Once that's been verified, the output light will come on. So under normal operation, the first three should be on, and the output light will be on if you're using the local loopback functionality. To the right of that is an audio selection switch. You have a choice of using standard HDMI audio or injecting audio through the line input on the back, and I'll show you that connection in a minute. And you can flip that switch to make it appropriate for whatever audio you'd like to send to the remote location. To the right of that is a bank of EDID switches, and those are used to adjust the frame rate and resolution of your input media to match your output display, and both of these are explained in the manual. To the right of that is a service port, and that's used for pushing firmware to the unit later on if new versions of firmware come out. It's a micro USB connection. You'll connect it up to your computer, move the firmware file over to here to complete that upgrade. On the bottom of the unit, as well as on both sides, you'll find ventilation slots, and those are designed to let any heat that develops during operation escape and keep the electronics inside at a very comfortable temperature. On the rear of the units where you'll make all your connections, starting on the left, you'll find a coaxial connection. That's where one end of the RG6 coaxial cable connects between the transmitter and receiver. To the right of that are two full-sized HDMI connections, HDMI in and HDMI out. The HDMI in port connects up to whatever media device you'd like to share the content from with your remote location, standard HDMI cable. The HDMI out port is used for the local loopback functionality. If you'd like to enjoy the content here, connect the second HDMI cable from here to a local monitor to enjoy that content. 
To the right of those is the line input. That's a three and a half millimeter input, and that's where you can inject audio to send to the remote location. To the right of that are two infrared blaster ports labeled receiver and flasher. At the transmitter side, you'll want to use the smaller of the two infrared blaster modules and plug it in here. To the right of that is a DC input port, and that's used with one of the power supplies. You'll plug that power supply into the wall. The barrel connector on the end of the cable plugs in here, and you can tighten the collar. The receiver is very similar. On the front, starting on the left, you'll find three LEDs. Power, again, that'll come on once the power on self-test is passed. The link light will come on once you have a valid connection between the two modules. And the output light will come on when you connect the monitor to the HDMI output port on the back of the module. To the right is another service port for updating firmware in this module if needed. On the bottom and sides, you'll find the same ventilation slots for cooling. On the rear of the unit, starting on the left, you'll find another coaxial connection. That's where the other end of the RG6 coaxial cable plugs in. To the right of that is a standard HDMI port, and that's connected to a local monitor so you can enjoy the content. To the right of that is an audio output port. It's a 3.5 millimeter analog audio port, and that's used for passing audio from this device to a soundbar or home stereo if you'd like to improve the quality of that audio. To the right of that are two infrared blaster ports, again, receiver and flasher. In this case, you'll use the receiver, and it's the larger of the two modules. You'll plug it in right there, and you'll be all set. Finally, to the right of that is a DC input port, and that's where the second power supply plugs in. Once you've made all those connections, you'll be all set to use the product. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to use this product with your own equipment. And for this demonstration, over here I've set up a small media player that's currently looping a video on this monitor, and that's the media content I'd like to send to my remote location. And that device can be a DVD player, or a game console, it can even be a home computer, pretty much anything with an HDMI output. Over here I've set up a second monitor, and this represents my remote location. It's wherever I'd like to enjoy the content from the primary location. In front of me, I have the transmitter module here and the receiver module here. Now the first connection I'll make is from the media device to the transmitter, and I'll do that by disconnecting the HDMI cable from the monitor and plugging that directly into the HDMI input port on the transmitter. And now I'm ready to connect my monitor up at the secondary location. I have another HDMI cable connected to this monitor, and I'll plug the other end of that into the HDMI output port on the receiver. And now we're all set to add power. I've already plugged in both power supplies. The other end of those cables have barrel connections on them, which plug into the back of the modules and provide all the power you'll need for operation. So I'll start with the receiver. I'll plug it in, and I'll just tighten that collar. And then I'll plug in the transmitter. And it's not important which order you plug in first. You can reverse the order. They'll work just fine. Now, the minute I add power to both of these modules, they start that internal power on self-test where they're checking the electronics. The transmitter is also checking the resolution of the media content, and the receiver is checking the resolution of the monitor, and they're getting ready to negotiate the best possible picture at that remote location. The only connection we're missing at this point is the coaxial RG6 between them, and I have a short length of RG6 cable right here, and I'll connect it up to the receiver and the other end up to the transmitter. Now the minute I make this connection, they start communicating and negotiating to send the media content from the primary side to the remote location, and that takes a couple of seconds for that handshake to happen, and there you go. Now what you're viewing over here is content that was HDMI content at the primary site converted to a signal that's being sent across an RG6 coaxial cable to the remote location, then convert it back into a signal that can be displayed on a monitor. And it's really incredible that you can separate these quite a distance away. Now, one other feature this product provides, which is really nice, is the local loopback functionality, which allows you to continue to enjoy the content here while you're sharing it with the remote location. And to use that feature, you'll need an additional HDMI cable. You'll plug one end of that into a local monitor and the other end of that cable into the HDMI output port on the transmitter. Now the minute I do that, they're going to readjust because there may be different resolutions in these monitors, and you'll see the image come back up first at the primary site, then eventually at the remote site, because again, the negotiation is taking place. And what you're seeing here is content being played at the primary site and enjoyed here while it's being sent to the remote site at the same time, and you can enjoy it at both locations together. It's a pretty incredible setup, and it really is just that easy to get it working. I hope that closer look was helpful. Now here are a few things that I really like about this particular product that's separated from a lot of other HDMI extender kits on the market. The first thing has to do with the distance. This product provides a distance of 100 meters between your primary location where your media product is located and your remote location where you'd like to enjoy the content from that media device. That's quite a long distance and it gives you a lot of flexibility in locating that secondary site. 
Another key difference is the fact that it uses a coaxial cable. A lot of these HDMI extender kits use a LAN cable, CAT5E, CAT6, CAT7, and a coaxial cable tends to be a little bit easier to run, it's a little less expensive, and in a lot of cases, your house may already be pre-wired with an RG6 cable, so it makes the connection incredibly easy. Another big difference is the audio extraction capabilities at the remote end. A lot of other kits don't provide that, and what that allows you to do is actually take the audio that's being sent there and send it off to a sound bar or home stereo for better quality audio so you can really improve the sound quality at that remote location. Another key difference is the local loopback functionality at the primary side. A lot of these HDMI extender kits on the market don't provide that capability, which means if you're extending that content to a remote location with one of the other sets, you can either watch it at the primary location or watch it at the secondary location, but not both at the same time. So the fact that this provides local loopback means I can enjoy the content here while I'm sharing it with that upstairs bedroom. And the final difference is the inclusion of the infrared blaster kit that just provides a tremendous amount of control over the content from that remote location because the receiver module will pick up your remote control signals at the secondary location and pass those back over that coaxial cable to the primary location where they're rebroadcast by this module over here so again you can effectively remotely control the content you're watching. Everything you need to get started is included with the kit, and I think they've done a wonderful job of building a product that delivers 4K ultra-high definition media content to a remote location. It's both HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2 compliant, so you know it's going to work with all of your gear and all the modern media files you're trying to transmit to that secondary location. So I hope you found this review helpful. I've enjoyed talking about it. I like the product a lot, and I think you will as well. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay nerdy. Thank you.